Continue from the first scenario where you have tried solifinacin but the patient was not very happy with the treatment and uh, coming back to you, you are trialing your second choice. What is your second choice? Um, my, this will be Mirabegron. Okay. So how will you explain Mirabegron to her? What is Mirabegron? So Mirabegron is, I'll explain to her that it's a beta-3 agonist um, which works via um, the um, activation of beta-3 receptors in the detrusor muscle um, to enable relaxation of the bladder as opposed to inhibited contractions. Um, and I will um, ensure that this patient also does not have any um, contraindications to it. Okay, what are the contraindications? Um, so these are an uncontrolled hypertension where the systolic blood pressure is greater than 180 millimeters of mercury or the diastolic is greater than 110 millimeters of mercury. Um, they also include um, severe hepatic impairment, um, a GFR of less than 15 and breastfeeding. Okay, if there is uh, liver or renal impairment, is there any way you can still help the patient with Mirabegron? Um, so if the GFR is between 15 to 29, then the dose can be halved to 25 milligrams once a day. Okay. So what advice you will inform the patient, so GP? Um, so I'll ask them to check the blood pressure at baseline um, and then at um, four and four, one, one week and four weeks. Um, and that if the blood pressure does um, increase to above the thresholds mentioned before, uh, then to discontinue Mirabegron um, and wait until further you further review by myself. Okay, what are the side effects of Mirabegron? The main ones are um, high blood pressure, um, UTI and nasopharyngitis. Okay, so is there any way you can improve her symptoms by giving any combination treatment in case if she comes back in 6 to 10 weeks and says that Mirabegron also not giving a good complete relief? Um, so it can be combined uh, with solifenacin, uh, either 5 to 10 milligrams once a day. Okay, any evidence to support that? Um, this is from the Synergy trial, um, which looked at uh, various combinations of either uh, solifenacin or mirabegron unit monotherapy, uh, combination therapy and compared to placebo. Uh, and this was used for both dry and wet erratic bladder. Um, and it found that combination therapy between 5 milligrams of solifenacin and 50 milligrams of mirabegron um, reduced the number of um, daily mean daily urgent continence episodes um, and was superior to solifenacin monotherapy. Okay, she is trying the combination, but uh, you are reviewing her in three months time. She has not much improvement, only very marginal improvement in the scores, but symptomatically, subjectively, she is quite symptomatic. What is your next step? Um, so my next step in management will be to um, request um, urodynamic studies for this patient to confirm the presence of the choose over activity um, prior to discussion at local MDT to consider surgical management options. Okay, what are you expected to see in urodynamics? Um, so during the filling phase, um, I'm expecting to see evidence of um, the choose um, over activity um, and possibly evidence of um, a, a urinary urge incontinence, um, a small bladder capacity as well. Um, and a normal voiding phase. Okay. If the findings of urodynamics supports presence of detrusor overactivity, what is your next step? I'll discuss this patient at a local MDT um, with the um, recommendation to offer her um, intravesical Botox injections as first line treatment. So, what is Botox? Um, this is a uh, Botox refers to onobotulinum toxin A, uh, which is derived from uh, the bacteria Clostridium botulinum. Um, there are seven serotypes, um, of which A and B are used clinically, um, and um, the mechanism of action of Botox um, is to inhibit the um, fusion of acetylcholine uh, containing vesicles um, to the um, Pre presynaptic membrane at the neuromuscular junction and to therefore um, inhibit bladder contractility. Okay, so how are you going to counsel her for Botox? 
Um, I'll counsel this patient with the aid of a BRAS procedure specific patient information leaflet um, outlining the benefits in terms of uh, treating her overactive uh, the truth over activity. Um, I will outline the alternative management options, including um, sacral nerve stimulation and posterior tibial nerve stimulation, and outline to the patient how this is carried out in terms of um, cystoscopy and injection of um, Botox into the bladder wall. And I'll outline the uh, risk of the procedure um, with specific ones, including uh, UTI, bleeding, um, the need for repeat injections. Um, and also urinary retention, um, which requires her to be taught um, intermittent self-catheterization prior um, to undergoing the procedure. So what is the dose you will advise her? Um, I will advise her that she should have a starting dose of 100 units as per the 2019 NICE guidelines on incontinence. Okay, so take me through the procedure on the day when she is consented and ready. Um, so I'll ensure the patient is appropriately prepped, consented and anaesthetized and I'll perform it under a general anaesthetic. Uh, I'll ensure that when she arrives she has a urine dipstick performed to exclude UTI. Um, I'll perform a WHO checklist to include appropriate BT and antibiotic prophylaxis. I'll place her into a lithotomy position, prep and drape the area and on a certain size 22 ridges to scope into the bladder and performing sister urethroscopy. Um, I will ensure that I've drawn up the Botox myself um, in 10 units, sorry, 10 mils of normal saline, um, so that there's 10 units per mil. Um, and I'll then administer um, 20 injections of 0.5 mils um, throughout the bladder, sparing the trigone and the UOs, um, and that the bladder is emptied satisfactorily at the end of the procedure. Um, I'll devise a post-op with clear immediate post, um, open up with clear immediate post-op and long-term follow-up instructions. Okay. Um, procedure went well, but uh, in the post-op, she was not able to pass urine and she ended up having retention. What is your advice? Um, so um, my advice would be that if this patient had been taught intermittent self-catheterization um, to see if she can attempt it herself, although if she's still recovering from the effects of the anaesthetic, I would advise um, that she have an endoend catheter inserted. Um, prior to discharge, she uh, should have another attempt. She should have an attempt at a talk. But if this is unsuccessful, then she should um, perform ISC um, and be reviewed by myself in six weeks. Okay. Is there any reason you need to increase her dose of Botox in the next time? How will you arrange her follow up? Um, so I'll arrange for her to be followed up um, in 12 weeks um, to assess the response. Um, I will provide her with contact details of the department so that if she's not experiencing any improvement at all by six weeks, then the dose, um, she should be considered for repeated injections at an increased dose. Um, and again, at the 12 week review, if there was initial improvement, but the symptoms are starting to come back, um, this would be another indication as per the NICE guidelines to increase the dose to 200 units. Okay. Um, do you know any studies to support uh, Botox in OAB? Um, so um, there is one study which there are two studies which were Embark and Dignity. Um, I think Embark looked at the use of Botox in idiopathic DOA, and Dignity was a neurogenic DOA, um, and both of them found improvement in um, mean daily um, urgent continence episodes. Um, compared to placebo. Okay, so let us assume that after the first injection of Botox, she got quite upset with the whole Botox phenomenon because of the urinary retention and need for intermittent self catheterization. What is the next choice for her? Um, so the next choice to offer her would be um, sacral nerve stimulation. So how it works? Um, so this works through the um, placement of a lead into the S3 foramina. Uh, this is then connected to a um, electrical device and stimulator, which is placed um, underneath the skin. Um, and this um, essentially modulates the activity of S3 um, in terms of producing bladder contractions. Okay, so how are you going to explain this to her? Um, I'll again um, explain it to her with the aid of a procedure specific information leaflet. Um, I will um, inform her that the procedure is carried out um, 
initially with a test implant um, with which is attached to an external generator and um, she has to keep a bladder diary for up to two weeks and she can then only proceed to the full implant implantation if there is at least 50 percent improvement in her symptoms okay uh, do you know any evidence for sacral neuromodulation um, there was the um, Rosetta trial which compared it to Botox in the management of um, idiopathic DOA um, and this found that um, it was as effective as Botox in terms of symptom improvement and reducing uh, mean daily urgent onset episodes um, but it had a much lower incidence of UTI retention um, and less than 10% chance of explantation. Any other options available other than sacral neuromodulation? Um, so the other options, if the patient's not keen on surgical management, would include posterior tibial nerve stimulation. Um, and further options beyond this would be augmentation cystoplasty um, or urinary diversion as a last resort. What do you know about uh, CAM cystoplasty? Um, so CLAM cystoplasty um, involves the interposition of a segment of ileum um, onto the bladder um, after it's been bivalved. Um, and this is with the aim of reducing the chooser contractility, um, reducing the chooser pressure, um, and also increasing the bladder capacity. Okay. Uh, what do you mean by detrusor myomectomy? Um, so this would be the incision. Um, sorry, I don't know. Okay. Okay, we'll stop there. As you heard, uh, there was uh, the 10 minutes finished, at least uh, we have discussed almost a minute overrun. So detrusor myomectomy is uh, nothing but bladder auto augmentation. So we are incising a portion of the detrusor muscle. It could be just an incising or excising the detrusor muscle and creating a pseudo diverticulum. The disadvantage is sometimes it, it's good in reducing the bladder storage pressure and increasing the bladder capacity, but in long term, the pseudodiverticulum can get fibrosed and sometimes it's not useful. Okay. Um, the other thing, as you said, is the urinary diversion. So, detrusor myomectomy is another thing which you can keep under your sleeve to help. Posterior tibial nerve stimulation, when you're explaining, please do mention that it is not supported by NICE guidelines as of now. If at all, if you're doing, it has to be under the local MDT review and should be okay. under a proper uh, trial, not not uh, open practice. It's still under trial. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let me take you back to the starting and then um, slowly we'll let us come down. Uh, I think we discussed a few things. I'm happy with your synergy trial evidence. Uh, synergy trial used solifinas in 5 milligram and uh, yeah. mirabegron 50 milligram so the no yeah. 10 milligram were used but in few patients solifinas in 5 milligram and mirabegron 25 milligram were used based upon the hepatic and renal function uh, some surgeons believe that you can give up to botox without urodynamics but nothing wrong in saying i will do urodynamics before any intervention medications yeah. no urodynamics once we have to go for botox it's better to have urodynamics uh, you have missed intermittent self catheterization teaching before Botox, so that is very handy for the patient to learn uh, in case if she needs post op. It's easy to counsel and you don't have to place the patient on catheter. She knows the ISC means she can just uh, do the ISC and she is aware that she may have to do that anyway. Yeah. Um, regarding how the Botox works, it has heavy and light chains. So, heavy chain binds to presynaptic nerve endings and that helps the toxin to be internalized and light chain cleaves SNAP25 that blocks the exocytes of acetylcholine. So heavy chain, light chain, heavy chain helps in the endocytosis and light chain cleaves SNAP25. Bit mouthful, yeah. but the terminology is just take a note of it and try to keep in your revision cards. Yeah. Botox can be done under local anesthesia, not necessarily every time under GA. Nothing wrong in saying GA, but it's nice if you can mention that I'm aware that some surgeons are performing this under local anesthesia yeah. with flexible stroscopy and flexible the needle guide. Uh, prophylactic antibiotic gentamicin is contraindicated. It's nice if you can bring on your own and uh, yeah. mention that you will give, say, ciprofloxacin or some other thing so that uh, 
uh, it's nice to bring those practical things which yeah. gives a confidence. I suppose I could say pantoprofil yeah. prophylaxis, but this would not be gentamicin. Yes. Yeah. So this gives the examiner a confidence. Okay, he definitely has attended the session. He's not just saying from the books. Um, you can bring urology nursing team both in the medications time, urodynamics time, and also as a key contact person after Botox. You yeah. said, I will give the urology number, which could be your secretary's number. Secretary can't help clinically. Urology nursing yeah. team is, will be quite handy. Or you can label it as a continence team also. Yeah. Um, yeah, otherwise it's good. If, if the patient is responding well to Botox, but if the effectiveness is not holding on till six months, then there is a indication to increase the dose to 200 units while yeah. for neurogenic detrusor over activity you will give 200 units from the starting uh, yeah. mbox study is a good one to mention and also the synergy study or the two main studies i'm not really bothered about the studies but if you you are at a good stage so i wish you to be confident in the studies also yeah good any suggestions feedbacks from yourself before we conclude um no, I don't think so. I think it's just been useful to fine-tune some of those things. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, certainly in terms of, um, I suppose, doing these 10-minute sessions, they do go by quite quickly. Mm. Um, so, um, yeah, I'm, I'm happy. I think I'm satisfied with my knowledge. Um, and I have been getting um, evidence from papers in and just reading the you know the summaries and mm. I'm pretty it, that is something i want to definitely you know aim for um good i think you're in a perfect stage uh, the only advice i will say is uh, have two a4 sheets for every table and start yeah. mentioning for example embark synergy you don't have to even mention what is inside and yeah. uh, or maybe in a in a small few values here and there so that yeah. uh, you will create two A4 sheets. Usually there will be a gap between the tables. So you know what table you are going to. Just take only these two A4 sheets and glance through that uh, uh, values and uh, definitions and maybe like nice 2019, uh, those things so that it will come exactly when you need it. Uh, yeah. Because you need to bring the things exactly in the 10 minutes. Th that's the... Yeah. main goal of the of the full teaching that can happen only by having your own handwritten notes if you are a, maybe like a, a ipad or mac user again you can create a good one slide or two slides maximum so that you don't have to go through your main reading books or guidelines in the exam day yeah okay yep good and uh, since you're on um, study leave now we have more flexibility i will try to give you some more sessions in the next two weekdays yes good. have a nice rest of the weekend thank you thank you very much i'll be in touch okay. bye bye, -bye.